During the 2024 National Port Revival Forum, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the National Committee for Port Revitalization, the International Think Tank for Landlocked Developing Countries, and the Maritime Administration under the Ministry of Road and Transport Development organized the Symposium Unlocking Opportunities, Convention on the Law of the Sea, Opportunities for Landlocked Developing Countries and the Development of Dry Ports on March 25th at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Mongolia. Opening the symposium, Minister of Foreign Affairs Batsuk, Minister of Mongolia, Chairman of the National Committee for Port Revitalization, Tolak, and member of the UN International Law Commission, Mukhargal, presented government measures implemented for port revival. The forum is being held on the 75th anniversary of the UN International Law Commission. Under the new recovery policy, the government of Mongolia is implementing specific measures, including the port revitalization policy, one of six policies addressing Mongolia's development challenges. Despite pandemic hardships, Mongolia effectively managed border disinfection and ensured cooperation among border organizations to maintain stable exports of goods and minerals. The increasing trade volume with China requires expanding border port capacity connecting roads and railways, and developing international transport with neighboring countries. The agreement between the government of Mongolia and the government of the People's Republic of China on international tra road transport relations and its implementation protocol established last year provide um, the legal framework for transit transportation between Mongolia and China. As we embark on the ambitious task of revitalizing Mongolia's port infrastructure, we are keenly aware of the challenges posed by our landlocked country. Status. Despite being geographically distant from the sea, we recognize the immense potential that lies within our grasp. The revival of our ports represents not only an economic imperative, but also a symbolic leap towards embarrassing the opportunities of global trade and connectivity. The revival of our ports will serve as a significant contribution for our economy, creating opportunities to expand our economic horizons and unlock new avenues for growth. By facilitating foreign trade and investment, our ports will become gateways to the world, enabling us to diversify our trade partners and increase our foreign exchange reserves. This injection of capital will fuel further development across various sectors, driving employment, innovation and prosperity for our nation. The International Law Commission has uh, encouraged uh, all members of the United Nations to hold uh, commemorative events, uh, either by itself or in conjunction with other events, to highlight the importance of the development of international law and its codification. The issue of uh, how to codify customary rules of international law has um, bothered the uh, best uh, thinkers and best minds of this world uh, for a long time and as early as 18th century Jeremy Bentham proposed uh, albeit uh, in some utopian forms uh, codification of international law and ever since uh, the creation of the League of Nations uh, in particular in 1924 there was a committee for the uh, committee of experts for the codification of international law and uh, Due to the prevailing atmosphere at the time in the international relations, uh, not much has been done within the framework of the uh, League of Nations, um, other than the Hague Convention on the uh, Nationality and Statehood. But nonetheless, uh, the League of Nations uh, laid uh, a very solid ground for the United Nations to further pick up the work.